Good morning, traders, and welcome to the Bookmap live trading webinar. This is Bruce at Bookmap, uh, and uh, we do this uh, live forward-looking analysis three days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Friday. It is open and free to all on Friday, so we have guests in here today, so welcome. Uh, and we're going to go through our educational process, um, and you get a, a feel for what you get when you subscribe to Bookmap. Uh, the Global Plus version uh, is what when you get these live trading webinars. So it is a follow-up to our educational course in the live market. It's not only live analysis, it's forward-looking. So we will uh, give insight to where we think price is going to move next based on that, that live analysis. So you can apply what you learn from the course, and then we have, uh, you can learn from two different professional traders, stock trader, J trader on Wednesdays, and Scott Pulsini, a futures trader on Thursdays. So you can learn from their very specific ways of trading uh, and reading order flow and their setups, their strategies and trade management. Uh, so we offer the whole uh, complete package here for your education. It is all included with your Global Plus subscription. Uh, I encourage you, uh, you know, go out and compare and shop around. Uh, see if anyone else offers this kind of education. Uh, I haven't seen it. Uh, included free like this. If they do offer something, likely it is hindsight analysis, not forward looking. Uh, and then uh, likely it costs hundreds of dollars, maybe even thousands. And okay. so it is all included with Bookmap. That is a very, very nice offering. Let's go through some disclosures and jump into the live market. Okay. General disclosure, all Bookmap limited materials, information, and presentations are for educational purposes only and should not be considered specific investment advice nor recommendations. Risk disclosure, trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. All right, let's jump in and take a look here. What's going on? Uh, and... Um, uh, interesting stuff. Previous webinar we just uh, finished up over there. Um, the uh, uh, very, very easy read. Well, let's just go through it here. Um, this is what we kind of saw when the webinar opened up at 930. Uh, we were seeing this drop. They pulled that liquidity around this uh, 16045. We're looking at the NASDAQ E-mini. Uh, we can look at other markets if you guys like. No, no problem. Uh, we're just seeing some good stuff here so far, so I'm going to continue on with it. Um, they pulled here. Well, where are we where are we going next? We're looking for 16,000 because look at how strong this activity was. Okay, so the, the no-brainer, higher time frame liquidity. This is where it wants to go, 16,000. Okay, it came down here just shy of it, right here, as you can see. Uh, and then uh, let's just zoom in here and, and just get getting us updated here before we uh, get into. Um, the, the live market. Um, uh, we, we see the uh, uh, the back and forth in here um, was looking for here. This was interesting. All right, so um, just shy of it is pretty typical. Uh, we've covered this so many times. Uh, usually you see people getting filled in front. They were not. Okay, that was kind of interesting to see. Uh, however, um, uh, this uh, our pivot line here, okay, important pivot area right here. Okay, now it happens to be also the the um, uh, point of control uh, in your volume profile. That just just means the most traded level, uh, and uh, that that's that's all. So it just means that basically in in this consolidation period here, it just means that this was what price was uh, kind of. Uh, the value of the instrument was uh, at that time was was uh, you know around this uh, 15 level here. Look at the sellers try to take it below it, okay? And we're looking for after after seeing we we're looking for that actually in here because buyers took it above it here. You, you can see it back and forth. Buyers sellers below it, buyers above it, bashing bashing back and forth. Buyers try to take it again higher. Sellers don't aren't having it uh, coming back in uh, hitting the bid looking for them to drop it. We're looking for that drop to unfold right in here because we we're finding sellers and they did, but I, we were looking for 16,000, they didn't. And then it's like, well, hold on a minute. Okay, if we get buyers back up above it and we're looking for the squeeze here, we're looking for that squeeze, looking for uh, 30 was our first price target and then 40 was our second. Uh, and uh, uh, we've got the, the nice move to the upside. 
interestingly enough, I mean, you know, you we would call this a short squeeze. Um, I I don't really see it as a short squeeze. Uh, these are these are buyers coming in here. They're moving it. Uh, this is where the stops and icebergs indicator, I, I think, offers tremendous insight. Uh, it, the reason being uh, is it's not showing us stops here. It's not showing us icebergs in here. And, and, and even this move to the upside is just it is indicative of a stop run. Now, it, we see it, you know, it, you can see the stops in here. Uh, and we can show you exactly how many uh, with the, um, the on chart indicator. Uh, but um, in fact, let me uh, let me get that up and running. But when it's not, what I'm trying to cover here is how insightful it is when it's not showing you something. Okay, so 21, 43, 37. These are stops. Okay, little stop runs in these little areas here. Okay, right up into high liquidity. Okay, so yeah, people are getting stopped out, but it's not a whole bunch. Um, it's not bad, uh, but um, uh, in, anyway. Um, so, so we're finding a lot of new buyers in here. That's what is important. Okay, the stops and icebergs is showing us uh, that there's new buyers coming in here. Okay, so then we're going to start to look at that in the order flow uh, with a, that kind of insight. Great. They should be able to lift it then at least back up to some of these levels here, right here where they dropped it from. And let's just zoom out a little bit. Okay, right here is also a swing that we're just busting through it right now. Okay, from the from the pre-market, uh, there's little levels in here, but um, uh, ultimately I want to see them actually come up to about the 75 level or maybe even 90 high of the day here. Okay, or at least high of this uh, session here. Okay, so um, yeah, if these are new buyers, then that's where I'm looking for it to go. All right, to previous areas in the order flow that were significant. Okay, and the buyers are coming in. Okay, we, we, we know that there's been a lot of buying in here, a lot of buying interest. Uh, and so they're moving it, moving it higher here. All right, so um, let's see here. Uh, good morning, Alan and uh, Alexander. When you have a chance, can we take a look at gold? Sure, crude and gold. Yeah, uh, all right, so uh, yeah, uh, another thing here uh, that we want to take a look at and we want to understand the order flow around these areas uh, is areas of consolidation uh, and uh, and breakouts or the order flow within those consolidation periods. Because typically the way the market works uh, is you get um, a consolidation period and back and forth and then something happens and the market breaks. Uh, and the market will go to a new level. Now, typically, that happens in, in kind of a, a, a catastrophic manner. And what do I mean by that? Okay, well, here we have consolidation, and then we look for a lot of volume to break away very quickly, typically. This is more typical here. We have actually a smaller consolidation period here, and then here's our big break, right? And look at the buy volume here. So the, the buyers were serious. They moved it away from that area. All right. So uh, that's what we want to understand uh, is where is that um, uh, big volume taking place? Uh, and then we want to see the movement as well. Okay. So they moved it to a new value area. And then you can see it goes back and forth within here uh, until uh, and we're going to see it right around this 45 or 48 level right here. You see the buyers above it. So we even have like kind of ranges within ranges here. Okay, so uh, maybe sellers would, you know, they'll try to like kind of upend these buyers in here and drop it right back down to this 40 level here. Okay, we'll see. Uh, but, um, uh, you know, try to get them stopped out. But the, the, the trick here is you can still remain bullish. Uh, this is where it broke out from at 40. Okay, on strong volume. So buyers have taken control and moved the market higher and, and it has not gone down below where they took control. Okay, in this time frame here from about 10.01 or 10.02 onwards, uh, East Coast time here. All right, is there any questions about that? Understanding market structure here uh, gives a tremendous amount of insight. 
Okay, we want to understand then the volume and also the auction around that market structure. All right, so let me clear the drawings here for now. And uh, yeah, we're starting to bounce off this area here. I wouldn't be surprised though to see sellers try to drop it below 45 back down into that area here around 40. I was just talking about. I don't see them doing it. So we're going to go with the order flow, looking for them to try to break up into the 60-ish area here and then through it on up to 65. See if they can do that. I don't know if we're quite ready for that move yet, but uh, that's the, the direction we would uh, point to right now uh, due to the order flow we're currently seeing. All right, now let's read the, um, not just the structure here, but what about the auction? What is it telling us here? Okay, the, the limit sell orders here and the limit buy orders over here. Well, see them pulling here on the bid? And they even pulled down here. So do they want to be buyers here? And the answer is no. So let's see if the sellers can try to break it. Okay, and if they can, where would they go next? Well, this liquidity looks pretty good down here around uh, 36. So let's see if these sellers can do it. Looking for it. And we should get a stop run too, right? Because these, these guys are going to get shaken out here. Here we go, looking for 40 and then maybe 36. Okay, selling looks pretty good. See, even on these smaller moves, this is where, I don't know if James is in here today. Um, and these, these markets are fractal and understanding the, the kind of fractal nature, see how even this little small move, um, it, it relates to what we're talking about. The sellers took control down here and then we're back up above it and buyers trying to take control here. So this is similar to what we saw in the previous uh, webinar. Uh, we're looking for the squeeze to the upside here. Um, we were looking for that move down into 40. It, it is failing. It's a back, back up above our pivot line here okay, this important area right here. Okay, and on size, okay, that's the important part. Size and then movement is what we're looking for here. Okay, so we're getting a low volume pullback. Now, if we can get back up to here at 50 with another big, big green dots buying here, likely we're going to get our breakout. Okay, and we get the breakout back up into the top of the range here at, at 55 or, or 60 up here that we we're looking for actually earlier. And they cannot, they cannot. Okay, we're back to the squeeze to the downside here. Anyway, we're seeing a nice battle between buyers and sellers. And this is typical around these kind of pivot points. Sellers below it, buyers above it. You know, they're really trying to move it and trying to get someone to get be wrong on the other side. Uh, and then, uh, you know, they, they've got to cover. All right, let's see if the buyers try to do that right here. Nope. Still looking for them. Let's see it. Big green dot here. And then a quick move up into probably 52 or 55. Yep, looking good here. Now we just need to be the, looking for that green dot. See how they're pulling here on the offer? As price comes up toward them, now they, they come back in as price moves back away. Now I know we're looking at a tiny little range here, but we just this kind of understanding in these um, areas of consolidation are the same on all time frames. See, see, and then look at the sellers try to come in here, and they're not. They're not. We. They're. They got below that 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 pivot area here. This line. Okay, we don't see a lot of selling. 
Okay, so now buyers have it here. Now they can, now they, they're pulling here. Now I'm looking for it for, you know, higher probability move that we're going to move up into 55 here. Seller's still fighting it. We got up to 52. Okay, buyers, let's see it. Seller's still fighting it there at 52. Look at that. All right, they've got a clean shot at it now. They pulled here at 55. Okay, they're adding on the bid. And we didn't find our buyers here. Right, so now it's starting to exhaust up here, actually. We're not finding buyers. We, it was a higher probability trade in here for a move to 55. Now they just exhausted out uh, of the market here. Buyers here, okay, um, buyers here, and a lack of buying up here. God, they come right back to it. All right, all right. Uh, let's see if they, they just traded into this 50 liquidity here. If we get our green dots again, we should get a nice move to the upside here. Yeah, here we go. Now 55, now 60 as well. I want to see 60 here. Sixty liquidity looks good. Sixty-five uh, liquidity looks really good as well. Okay, I'm going to have to do a little hindsight uh, uh, education here, uh, just to kind of cover this, and it, it, it happened a little little quickly here uh, to to go over in real time. There's our move, sixty, and and looking for sixty-five. There's 65. Let's zoom out here. Where else is this going here? This is the breakout. Um, yeah, uh, up to our 75 level that we talked about earlier. Maybe maybe uh, we can get it back up into 90 up here. Okay, that would be high of the day. Now we should, we should really start to see some stops uh, trickle. Not trickle. Um, we should see some big stops to the upside here. Okay. We are. All right, a little, little tricky move in here, uh, but uh, I, I want to cover it. I mean, we're still moving, and we're still looking for this to go higher. Okay, we're almost at our 75 level that we were talking about earlier. And what else was it? I think it was not just 75. This I liked this one. Yeah, up here, um, this swing. Yeah, around 75. And then also 90 looks really good. They've been, they've been in the book for quite a while, and they never they never traded here. That liquidity up here at 90. Okay, so we have a little bit more uh, uh, understanding as well here in the in the the order flow and the market structure on higher time frame uh, buyers coming in. Okay, we, we talked about it earlier uh, that, uh, well, we don't see any stop runs in here. We're looking for a squeeze, you know, a short squeeze to the upside, and we're not getting it. So if they're, if they're not stops being triggered, this must be new buying. That would be the assumption. Okay, and uh, yeah, that assumption, you know, uh, played out pretty nicely in this move to the upside. Okay, sellers coming back in. We uh, kind of interesting move. Okay, 65 blazed through that, and it did not trade to our 75 level. Okay, a little shy of it. Okay, came pretty close. Came up here about uh, 73, uh, and then sellers came in, traded into. The, now this is uh, typically, you know, uh, what we see. Typically, what we see on these moves um, from one new zone to the next, okay? That's what I was talking about earlier as well. Uh, this, you know, this is playing out really nicely to, uh, I mean, it's always, it's typically the same stuff here. But this is what I, we were covering, consolidation, breakout, 
and then look at how they see how they're supporting it here on the on the bid and they actually sellers took them on and traded into them here uh, where it broke out from where at 60 they're on the offer here now they're on the bid okay so uh, let's just let's clear our lines again here um, going through a lot of stuff We're trying to go through it um, in real time here and keep up uh, the um, this is typical though we look for them to support it buyers would should support it right uh, now we're getting we're getting sellers testing those buyers though they're down below that area here at 60. Uh, they they took these guys on on the bid they these guys bought uh, and the transaction took place here and now if we get back up above it great then we're looking for this liquidity back up here and now up here actually 70. okay so around 65 70 looking for buyers to stream right up to that area okay, because we're above this area right now. That's kind of the key. See, see buyers or sellers, um, I'm sorry guys, I'm kind of all over the place today. Um, sellers, uh, they come back in and try to drive it below that area. This is an important, they know it's an important area and they're trying to get price to move that way. And this is where the battle is shaping up. And now buyers are back up above it. Now we're going to get our move. Okay, these guys got it wrong. They tried to take the market down. They got it wrong. They had to cover uh, on the other side. Okay, so these pivot points are really kind of um, where you see these battles erupt. Uh, and it does, you can see it's a high volume node as well. Okay, it's primarily due to this these two transactions here, the buyers here and the sellers here. Okay, there's not a whole lot in here. It's just trying to get people below it or trying to get people above it here. But understanding this kind of, um, and it's, it's, it, it looks like it's a detail. Uh, it, it's not though. It, it's, it's really just understanding what happened at this price level. Why did price break out? Okay, How it returned back to this area here. Uh, and uh, and what's going on at this area? It's an important area, the 60 level here for this time frame. And now the buyers are back up above it, and we're looking for them to extend and reach. We're looking for 65. We're looking for 70. Okay, we're looking for 75. Any questions? Because we were we were covering this here. Uh, understanding like th these kind of uh, large moves like this and how it moves away from an area of consolidation. This is really a key element to understand in market structure. Okay, what what makes the market move here? Who, who knows the answer to that? What What makes the market move? Any, anyone? Any ideas? Exactly. The aggressors, uh, uh, Alan. The aggressive buyers and sellers, right? Market buy and sell orders. Now, I'm just, I just want to uh, uh, detail this out just a little bit here uh, so that uh, you, you guys, because we have uh, guests in here today, um, because it's, it's, it's really, one thing that's really nice about Bookmap is it such simple data? We're not showing you anything, you know, uh, crazy here. It's not some sort of super, you know, slick indicator or anything like that. It, it's simply not. Uh, it, what we're showing you here is just what happened in the market. Uh, and, and that's the, the beauty of it here. It's so simple. In fact, Bookmap was developed for ourselves, uh, for our own uh algo performance to understand our algo performance so i'm going to zoom into the current market here or just the recent historical market here and i want to show you what i mean okay because we wanted to see our performance like what was unfolding how is it performing uh and we needed to understand well what is what's going on in the market so here's best bid and offer okay red lines best offer green lines the best bid Green dots are market buy orders when you hit the market buy button. And that's what moves the market. 
what Alan was just saying, okay? Because they take liquidity. There's the other side of the trade. Who's on the other side of the trade? The passive limit sell orders and passive buy orders below the market. Okay, that's where they're in the auction. Uh, that's where they're bidding and offering at specific price levels. And they're, and they're passive because they're waiting in the order book. They cannot technically move price. What technically moves price is the market buy and sell orders. Why is that? It's because they take liquidity from the, uh, the best offer in this case. And if they take enough liquidity, they will sweep the order book higher and price will move higher to the next level. And it will trade there. And then if there's enough buyers, they'll trade through into these higher areas of liquidity. And that's what makes the market move. Okay. Now, you can argue, and I always do argue, that the limit sell orders, uh, we see them move the market all the time uh, due to their influence. Okay. But technically, they cannot make them move. Right. But uh, if they show massive supply or massive demand, there might not be enough buyers interested in tangling with that liquidity, like up at, up at 70 right here. But we can gauge that understanding. Do we find buyers interested in it? So far, yes, yeah, so, so good. Okay, now we, we look for it though. Uh, you can see sellers, you know, buyers start, start, start to wane a little bit. Now they wanna buy it maybe at a lower price here. Now they're getting, they're coming back up. We get a retest back up here. And let's see if these buyers are interested in coming up into this 60, 68 and 70 level. If there's enough, we'll see them. Okay, look at the sellers trying to get it below 60 again here. Trying. They're really trying to, to drive it lower. And if they can, they can upend all of these buyers. Okay, if they can't, they're going to be the ones that are going to get upended here. Okay, so again, you can see this pivot line is holding really nicely in this current market. And here come our buyers now, right? After you see the drop here, okay? Because these guys have to cover. Okay, so we trade up into 65, top of the range. Okay, not enough buyers to get up into 70 though. Okay, look at the sellers once again. They're gonna try it. They're trying to get down to 55 and then maybe uh, 51. Okay, a little more successful this time. Okay, still, again, buyers are going to try to upend them right above uh, 60 here. And there's buyers. There's buying interest. I like it. I'm still looking for them to trade up into, uh, yeah, 60, 67, and 70 here. Now there's some insights in here. Now look, here's a skew in the in the book, and what do we find? Buyers. Okay, more more liquidity up on a higher level on the bid. They're bidding up, and we found buyers react to it. Okay, that's another understanding of of the reaction to liquidity here, uh, and that's one of the reasons why I'm looking. I'm still bullish here in the in the in the move to 70 here, uh, due to this liquidity in here. Yeah, these are some subtleties uh, in understanding liquidity around some of these areas. Okay, so one of the things here was we were finding buying interest and they weren't even really bidding up in here. So buyers are still interested regardless of the order book. Well, then if we see the order book come in with some interest, we should find even more buyers, right? They, they should be, uh, uh, it should repel them. Uh, away from these areas here, and it should attract them to this liquidity at 68 and 70. Okay, so due to this kind of action within here, okay, before that liquidity came in, and then after that liquidity came in, I'm looking for the buyers. Okay, it gives us insight uh, for them to trade back up into these levels. Okay, we got back up to 65, uh, and that's been it so far.
All right. So anyway, that's the goal here in these webinars is to, uh, uh, you know, give give insight of you know how you might read uh, <clears throat> the the order book in different ways or use book map in different ways <clears throat> within your trading strategies. Okay. So you might be maybe you're a fib trader. Um, well, I, I don't have any fibs to take a look at here, but let's say. Uh, Let's see here. Above this area here, well, this is likely a a, a fib extension of a um, hundred. Um, came back up into here and then you know has sold back off to you know the the zero point basically, or fifty I should say fifty point. So uh, you know. You'd be looking at your your fib levels, but understanding the order flow within those fib levels. Okay, I'm not much of a fib trader. I I, I don't follow it. I used to a lot. Um, I like measured moves, etc. But uh, <clears throat> you know, moved on into um, uh, you know just everything basically. God, you could look you could look at uh, um, your Elliott wave. You could look at your candlestick patterns. Does not matter look at the order flow around those events to give you more insight. Okay, that's where the key is gonna, gonna be. So we can take a look at a candlestick chart here. Let's look at maybe a five minute candlestick chart. Okay, this is uh, the new new heat map uh, here we have, which I really like. Um, you can um, make it transparent here. Okay, so uh, we can take a look at look at the moved guys. Finally, sellers are, are winning below 60. Okay, so they're going to drive it lower. We're looking for 40. Um, looking for some of these swings down here in this liquidity. 40, 35. They've got it here. They've got control and they're moving it away on size. So I'm looking for them to move it down to 40 and 35 from this. Uh, we're right around 46, 47 right now. Okay, so looking for that, yeah, that move into into 40 here looks looks pretty good, pretty good here. Okay, and then and then 35 after. So anyway, let's take a look at some candlestick patterns uh, and then start to understand order flow around those areas. All right, well here's our breakout. Okay, strong volume on that breakout, great. All right. We're looking for buyers to support it. They have up until this very point right now, where sellers are now trying to break it below that area here. And this is gonna be below 50 right here. All right, so we can go through a candlestick pattern of, uh, here's you know two, two um, small candlesticks up here and then sellers driving it away below the low here, right? So you'd be looking for them to trade it back down to um, uh, this this wick or where the where they found buyers down in here, which is the swing low. Okay, so now th the problem here is like uh, you know you'd look for maybe a retest back up to the uh, where this wick is here, and where they dropped it in here. Right, and that's where we draw our line. But we want to understand the selling around these areas here, uh, how they are able to move it lower like this. Right now, the buyers are come backing up to retest these where where these sellers came in. Okay, here's our pullback. There's 50% of your candle. There's a fib trade as well, like 50% of this candle. Right now, what what's going on around that 50% level here? Well, we're finding some some pretty strong buying in here, actually. Not bad, not bad. So they're going to try to take it probably back up to 60. So the, this fib level here of 50, well, you know, up to you, but it uh, doesn't look high probability to me. Uh, I would look for a retest back to 60 here. Okay, and there it is, right? Okay, so if they can do that now, Maybe they can come back up to the high. Okay, and they've done that already. Now look at the buying in here. Look at the strong buying. All right, looking for 70. OK, 
Okay, we got we got back up to the top of the top of the range. Let's, sorry guys, I gotta get rid of the candlestick. It's just kind of getting in the way. But I think you get the idea of what we're talking about here. Uh, being able to understand the order flow around these events is w where you're going to get the insight. Because candlestick patterns fail all the time. Why do they fail? Is due to the order flow around it. All right, we can put our heat map back on. Yeah, this is a really nice target for the buyers here, 67 and 70. So I'm looking for, here's leg one. And now we can talk about some pattern trades as well. Okay, so uh, nice, you know, it's actually a little flag pattern in here, but I, I'm looking for a bigger flag pattern. Very strong move, consolidation, looking for a very strong move again. Okay, back up into this liquidity here, and uh, we can look at even measured moves. Okay, so here's our measured move here, right? We'd be looking for the next move. Here. So this liquidity up here, maybe, you know, if, if you like measured moves here, we're already in, into our 70 level. That's what we're looking for. Now we're looking for maybe higher. Okay, if you're measured move, uh, you know, uh, type of guy or, or gal. Anyway, confirm it with the order flow. Okay, volume profile, lots of volume profile traders, uh, very popular. Okay, uh, Bookmap works great with it. Okay, understanding the the the, the um, uh, profiles of volume okay, and understanding high volume nodes, which means value, means that uh, most traders agree with that price level. So, what does it take to move price to disagree with that? Okay, to disagree with this price level here, you're going to have to find a, a lot of people that disagree with it. Oh, I'm sorry, Alexander. Yeah, we'll look at gold. Um, I'm on a rant here. Um, and it's been a bit of a review here. I mean, we're seeing some great stuff here uh, in the uh, in the order flow. Uh, so I just kind of stuck with it. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll jump over. Uh, but let me, let me cover this on uh, volume profile. Uh, and then we'll just take a look at some of these other markets. Give me just a, another minute here. Um, so in, anyway, volume profile areas. Okay, uh, again, market structure uh, is a, a, an important part of volume profile. Okay, areas of consolidation. Okay, high volume node in in that area. Uh, breakouts. Okay, areas of consolidation. Low volume nodes happen in these areas where it breaks out right around in here, typically. Why is that? Because it's a catastrophic break into a new level and very little trades in those little levels in there, typically. All right, so you get your, your high volume node, low volume node, high volume node. And if you get those trending days, you know what that looks like. High volume node, low volume node, and it just repeats on up. Okay, compared to your single distribution, double distribution, whatever it might be. Okay, it's all the same stuff, but we want to understand within the structure when the buyers and sellers start to come in to move it away from those areas. All right. And I would also uh, encourage you to understand some of the limitations of uh, some of these trading strategies, okay, like candlestick patterns or, or volume profile. Understand that this is aggregated data in the profile. Okay. And that's good. It gives us insight for that structure. But we want to understand what's happening here right now at the top of the structure. That's what's insightful, okay? Because we see strong move here, uh, and then we're back up here. If we get enough buyers up here, we're going to break it. That that this profile trade or uh, area here is not telling us anything like that. Okay, so it it has limitations. Understand those limitations. Understand its aggregated data. All right. Uh, let's jump over crude, crude oil, take a quick look. Okay. I've got data from 6 AM, uh, traded into high liquidity down here and here, uh, buyers come in same type of stuff here. Uh, Alexander, look at some of these pivots. Okay. 
right here above it, bounce back off, try to try, they try to get it below it. Look at the buyers come in. They're gonna move it here, top of the range, and they break out back up into 8120. Okay, looking great. Here's another area. They broke out from this area of consolidation. Okay, and now we're back testing it here at uh, 8090. Yeah, Alexander, really, seriously, like I would encourage you if, if I know you've been in here for a bit um, uh, and, and you really like the structure like this, I would encourage you to, to stop looking at everything else right now um, and, and try this. See if it works for you. Uh, just look at market structure. Okay, so just pare it down uh, and um, don't look. Yeah, it's going to be tempting to look at volume. Don't look at your heat map. Just look at market structure okay? and start to outline these structures. And it's fractal, like I said, you'll see structure within structure. I mean, you can go, it's almost endless. Um, but uh, look at the bigger ones is, is what really kind of matters here. You know, here, uh, here's where it broke out, see? And then it broke down again, it retested. But look at the strong buy volume that comes in. You're going to see strong buy volume on this move. Um, and then it comes back into structure and then breaks out. All right, so here's your other little structure and then new one here and then one here. Okay, now what we want to understand within these structures is the volume. Okay, just start really simple. And let's take a look at the volume. Okay, now you can start to understand. Look at this false breakdown, trap, pulled away, buyer squeeze. And interestingly enough, we don't see, this is new buying coming in here. They're actually getting squeezed to the downside. New selling coming in down here as well. They're, now those sellers get squeezed out here. This is a nice little squeeze here and here and here. All right. So anyway, start with this and start to understand the volume within these areas. Okay. It'll, it'll give you tremendous insight. Okay, better than a footprint or market delta chart because they're going to show you aggregation of that of that data um, of that volume data and, and it, it, you won't be able to see the structure and the structural nuances uh, you you'll get in way before these guys in footprint uh, they're they're waiting for pullbacks and stuff because they don't they, they can't see the this the structure like this so typically uh, you'll see it's it's really interesting to see like you'll see like buyers start to come in and move it and then you'll see the the footprint traders will get back in on the on the on the retests a lot of times okay because they they can't see the the, the relationship in here uh, due to the aggregation of their data uh, anyway get good at this and then now add that final element and understanding the nuances of the heat map okay where are the buyers and sellers okay what is like what is going on in the auction here Okay, so trading up into this high liquidity up here, not enough buyers to take it higher. That's going to give you insight for a pullback to some of these areas here. Uh, Ulias, let's see, you have a question. Um, is there a way to collapse just the heat map and show only panels with uh, numerical values? No, no. I, I mean, what you could do is... Um, uh, yeah, I mean, you, you don't have to show the heat map up here. You can, you know, you can deselect it, uh, et cetera. But uh, what you can do is um, uh, just just make book map smaller like this. Okay, and you can, um, you'll still have some of the heat map in here, but you can make the columns wider, right? And your heat map is very, very small. Something like that. Uh, you wanted to open several instruments to price ladder. Well, no, here, here's what you can do as well. Now it depends on, you know, your, your machine as well. Like uh, I have many different instruments opened up here, um, but you can uh, double click on them and pop them out into a new chart. Okay. And then you can put these on different monitors or wherever, however you want to arrange it. You know, maybe you want to arrange it within the same, you know, it, it's up to you. All right, so yeah, play around with it. Um, if you want to pop that back into the tabbed version here, just close it here. It'll pop back in. 
yeah, double left click on it, or you can just drag and drop it. Um, Alexander, just drag and drop it here. It'll, it'll, it dropped onto another monitor for me here, the cues. Ah, interesting one. Uh, we, Doug Pless is in here as well. Uh, and, uh, you know, he, he looks at the cues uh, and uh, high liquidity up here. Okay, just trading into it now. Guys, we were looking for this move earlier up into the swing high um, due to this move down here. And then we saw that new buying coming in here. Well, we're up here already and we're trading up into it in the queues. Okay, so let's go back to our NASDAQ for just a second, Alexander, because this is kind of important, right? We were looking for the potential move up into this 90 area here. Okay, that has already unfolded, right? And we also have the queues. We have a correlated market, highly correlated market, an ETF. Okay, look at this strong move here as well on that buy side. We miss this as we're going over crude. But is there any kind of like, you know, lack of understanding uh, of why this unfolded here? Right, look at the strong move happened here. These the, the sellers tried to drop it. They got upended. We came back up into the range. Uh, this is where those buyers took control in here. And then we see them nibbling away, nibbling away, and here's our breakout. Look at that strong volume. And we'd be looking for the next area, 87, 90 to transact. Okay, and it already has. Now they can still go higher too. There's still, this is still a pretty strong market here. But start to also look at the, your correlations. How is it relating to the queues? Okay, get insight on that. Now that, 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 that area on the queues is really important. That was high liquidity. So we might have to have a pullback here before we find new buyers. So start to go through some of those scenarios understand some of those scenarios you know how how we might um, uh, what would the order flow look like for it to come back down here okay well high liquidity on the offer we see that okay we want to see them pull on the bid and we're looking for big red dots now and here here they come they're trying right all right so let's see if they can trade down to 80 okay I'd be looking for it Okay, pull back immediately. No, nope, this is going to be a false breakdown, looks like. Okay, this is another little pivot area here. Below it and above it, 85. Below it and above it. So now we're above it, and then we find the buyers here, back up into 90. Buyers have it lined up, actually, for, for 95 here. And maybe 100. Yeah, it look, looks good. This, this is a false breakdown. I, I wanted to see it trade down to this liquidity, but uh, uh, we came back up above it and we're finding our buyers. Anyway, um, let's go over also uh, gold. Oh, we're just missing the move here. Yeah, there's 95. Beautiful stop run as well. Sold off immediately. All right. So now we also have correlated markets though, right? So we just traded into this liquidity here. The transaction has occurred. Here it is. Thank God, beautiful stop runs. Guys, this is what a stop run looks like. Right up into high liquidity here. This is, this is one event. Okay, and we're gonna see a lot of stops in there. I want to show that. And I want to show that without any filtering. Okay. Yeah, 121. Now, this is really interesting. I mean, if you know, the, all the details are here, and, and why I want to cover this. Um, Uh, let's see, um, you watched his webinar 100 times. Who was who that, uh, Alexander? Uh, anyway, the, um, the uh, oh, Doug's, yeah. <laughs> now, Doug's is great. I mean, like, uh, uh, I, I love what Doug did. Um, he, you know, looked at, really looked into the options 
uh, from Spot Gamma, and they offered a new product. I mean, it's brand new. Even even Brent Kachuba, the the options uh, expert, uh, who had the idea for developing this and and made it happen, uh, looking at gamma levels in real time, real time options, uh, sub, you know, significant levels. Uh, and then you know, Doug studied it and came up with a, a trading strategy uh, out of it, and he, and he trades it. Like, this is how you do it. Right. This is this is uh, you, you, you need to go back. You need to do your due diligence. You're studying. Find out, you know, how to operate this thing, where you can uh, determine an edge and then start to trade it. OK, trade around it. Look at trade management around it. Right. So understanding these markets is 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 the uh, kind of uh, foundation. Uh, anyway, stop run started down here. Uh, this little. This little order right here triggered it. It's crazy stuff. I mean, just it triggered all these stops in here. Someone's order got got uh, cascaded into more stops, more stops, and uh, you know we, we see the move higher here. Okay, now it's it's not just um, maybe this is all stops. Yeah, I, I believe it is. Yeah, this is just a massive stop run. The red line here, 121, and it ended here. As soon as this event ended, the best bid and offer updated. Right? This event takes place first. Update takes next. Right? Really, really, uh, it, it's 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 just data. Okay, but look at the insight. It, it's incredible. Okay, now, now you're starting to understand some of those levels of where these, if those are stops, those aren't new orders. Okay, if it's stop loss orders. All right, let's take a look at gold. Okay, gold's going up. Okay, in fact, you know, high liquidity up here, it's been in here, you know, looks like the entire overnight session basically. But here, here's that, that same pivot point right here. High liquidity on the offer, it trades, they trade through it, come back, bounce off it, now they're supporting it on the bid. Okay, flip of the order book basically. It's not really a, a you know, the definition of a flip, but you can see that, you know, offer to bid. And buyers want to buy now up here, right? So now this would be a deal. Is what 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 buyers are saying here with their orders, and they're staying in the book and transact, is they think that this is a deal here. Okay, that this is the low end. This is the new low end uh, bargain of this uh, uh, instrument because you have your consolidation and your breakout pulls back this is the new area here that is a deal uh, and then you're looking to buy they bought uh, sellers took them on and uh, now we're gonna see who wins the battle if the sellers can get below this area we'll, we'll see a nice move back down into this liquidity here Alan what would you um, uh, kind of po poise pose the question to you um, uh, what was the was was market? I'm just curious if market structure was. Uh, I'm kind of leading you with the the question, or what was the thing that was kind of important for you to understand? Um, for uh, it, you know some of the trades that you've 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 been taking, um, what was kind of the light bulb uh, that helped you the most here? One, the element here to understand like uh, uh, with with book map and in, in in reading the order flow hitting hitting high liquidity levels okay yeah okay so understanding them as like a, a target 
yeah, that the market is attract if to see if the market is attracted to it. If they are, that's where they're going. Would that be correct in assuming? Liquidity moving out of the way. Yeah, okay, opening up a path as well. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so uh, th then you're talking about market structure in terms of liquidity. And, and I was going to I was going to allude to I, I would I would think that it would be market structure, understanding market structure and then the order flow around it. And it, it kind of is. But you're, you're, you're actually uh, taking it a step further. And, and what you're looking at is the um, limit sell and buy orders to create that structure, which is exactly what they do. Right. In this case here, it's in gold. It's, it's very simple. Right. Right here. OK. And now that they're pulling opens the window see the sellers now are they still are they are the buyers still here no what if we do we see if we see more sellers here on the offer okay and we see red dots which means aggressive market sell orders well if if the reaction to the liquidity up here uh if, let's say these guys pull and add lower and we see more sellers well then this would be your target okay this area down here which was and a very um, important area here, actually. Look at all of this activity in the um, on the bid, on the offer, on the bid, on the offer. This is um, yeah, very challenging to trade uh, this kind of area in here because you, you know you're, you're looking to get insight here, and but then they're pulling, you know, they're adding. Actually, they're getting a lot of insight in here. They actually stayed in the order book here. This is a big, pretty big transaction here. Uh, and we found we found buyers. We, we found the pullback here, but not enough sellers to get below it. Great. If we can get back up above this area here on the buy side, we're looking for the top of the range and then potential move into this liquidity here. Okay. It not only did that, it broke out from it. So anyway, again, starting to understand that liquidity in here, very challenging in here. This this gives some pretty good insight here. Now I know that's hindsight, right? But uh, it, we would make the same assumption in the live market. We do it all the time. So here's our liquidity on the offer now, right? We were just talking about this. Okay, what's the reaction? Well, the action reaction's pretty muted, right? I, actually, we're starting to find some buyers interested. That's if this scenario is to break down below here, we need to see sellers. And we're starting to see a little bit now, but we want to see a lot of sellers. Here we go. Now it's starting, they're starting to kick in a little bit. Okay, well, they got first, the first move they got to get down to is right here. And there, we don't have liquidity there. The sellers are coming, they're starting to come in now. Right, so let's see if they can move it down into maybe 62, 62.40 here. Speed and momentum, understanding of vacuum. Okay, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I would, um, I would encourage encourage you, uh, Alan, and and also Alexander, to um, look at. Um, some of these some of these moves here with the, the the moving away from areas on high volume okay because that establishes new value areas okay there's all sorts of pullback strategies within that as well um, but then and then to target where where might it go right you can use measured moves if you want you can use your fibs you can use whatever you want previous areas of of uh, swings uh, or liquidity okay I would just Encourage you to line them up with liquidity uh, for for more insight. All right. So anyway, we covered gold for you, um, Alexander. We covered uh, crude. Let's take a quick look back at crude and see what happened here. Yeah, it's just been back and forth in that area uh, so far. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, let's let's go jump back to this Nasdaq. Oh boy, makes me sick. It makes me like physically sick. Uh, we spent time on on the the other instruments, and these are the kinds of moves we we look for um, in, in these markets. So anyway, 
you know, that's uh, kind of unfortunate. Um, we, we, we were looking for a move into 100. First 90 here, that that unfolded. We already saw that. Okay, but then look at them above, uh, back into 100. And look at the buy volume. Look at the buy volume, right? That's the key here of understanding that context, the re relationship of that this strong buy volume and the liquidity and structure. Okay, here's the same phenomena that we just covered. I know it's hindsight, but it's just a good example. Okay, buyers come in, trade into, and through this liquidity, they have more buying pressure. We're looking for these areas to transact. Okay, we get a pullback to where, uh, where it broke out from, even a little bit more bullish. They're up above where they broke out from in here. Okay, you, we can get a pullback to about here, 97, and still be bullish. You can even go back to the point of control of this range down here and still be bullish, around 95. Once you start to see a dip below that on strong selling, then it, you're looking for it to continue, or other side of the range at least. Okay, but anyway, you'd be bullish in here. And you see this this uh, liquidity on the bid supporting it, just like we were looking at, I think, in, uh, in gold there. They're supporting it. Okay, and uh, so we'd be looking for higher highs. Or at least back up to here, and then they broke out. Looking for another area of consolidation, and then breakout. Consolidation, breakout. High high volume on the on the uh, uh, on the movement up. Yeah, correlation is another good one, uh, Alan. I, I love looking at the correlations. Okay, looking for 150, right? Look at the, what's the order flow like in, up in here? Well, so far it's bullish, pretty bullish. Like uh, uh, we're, we're going sideways and we're not finding too many buyers, but we're not finding sellers to drop it. So that means right now, at least, there's no selling interest, not much. There's just no buying interest right now. Okay, that, that's basically it. So this, the, starting to understand even some of the, your flag patterns, you know, it gives you a lot of insight. What's going on within the volume and also the auction, the order flow. Okay. Actually, this could be a little false breakout here. Let, let's see if we get sellers down here. Okay, and then I would, I'd be looking for them to move it down to 120 here. Yeah, here we go. Let's see if they can do that. They're gonna hit it pretty hard and it's gonna be pretty fast, 125 and then 120. If, if they can show up. Let's see. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Um, yeah, no, I was really, really, you know, you, 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 you uh, sent uh, a couple of uh, screenshots of uh, some of your trading activity. It was really great. It's great to see. I mean, you're applying exactly what we're covering in here. And th those are beautiful trades, just, just beautiful. All right, let's see if these sellers can drop it here. Uh, we're still bullish, of course, but we're just looking for them to try to drop it down into this area here. Um, we just haven't had a really big pullback yet. Um, is that scenario likely? Probably not, because this is so bullish here. It's a tight little range up at, up at a higher level, not enough sellers to come in here, but I'm just looking for them to try to upend some of the buyers, get a, maybe a stop run to the downside into 120. So here we go, L liquidity on the on the offer here. Do the buyers take them on? Not yet. Looks like they're gonna though. Yeah, there they did. <laughs> like a proud father. Yeah. Um, no, it's just really cool. Really cool to see. And then, uh, yeah, also uh, Alexander, uh, also really, really nice. Um, you know, he watched uh, Doug's video about a hundred times. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, reach out to Doug. He's in the Discord chat room. Uh, Chris, yeah, it's nice having you in here, Chris. Uh, I know you. It looks like you left already, but. Uh, um, 
consider posting this one on YouTube. You know, I, I posted this last one on YouTube and um, the recording was just horrible. I, I it was it was from GoToWebinar too. So uh, maybe I'll 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 take a look at it. If it if it's good, then then we'll do it. Um, but um, uh, yeah, here's our here's our drop, guys. Now this is a uh, these things like are hard to you know uh, determine when they might happen. And in fact, they're getting upended already. Uh, here's a quick move down, and buyers are back up above it. But we don't know when this is going to happen, when they just dump like this. We were considering or and uh, like talking about that scenario here uh, that, you know, looking for them to trade down into 120 here uh, just to try to, you know, kind of uh, mix things up here. Uh, but uh, they only got down to as far as this 125, a little bit lower. But these are very hard to understand when these might come in. Okay. Now look at the, see the, the buyers back up above it yet again here. Okay. Yep. Nice move. 140 and then 145, 150. This, this is looking good. This completes that, complete that flag pattern up into 150. Okay. So we we're looking for that move. Uh, we kind of got something and then buyers came in viciously on the other side. So yeah, looking for them to trade at 150 here. What's interesting about this move is something, um, let's see here. Now, Doug, do you, you don't you don't mind if I keep mentioning you in here, do you? <laughs> if, if you don't like it, I, I, I won't do it. Uh, guys, beautiful move, beautiful, beautiful move here. Uh, just, just shy of 150, but still looking for it. Uh, what I what I wanted to mention was the you know uh, the correlations. Okay, looking at the cues. Uh, and and uh, yeah, I can show you Doug's video um, where he looks at. It. And I I'm kind of surprised. Usually when you see high liquidity like this um, in the cues, uh, you know you don't you don't see them uh, bust out from that area. At least I I don't I don't see them uh, doing that that often. I haven't studied it enough, uh, but uh, yeah, this is pretty pretty typical. They, you know, you reach these targets and you'll get a pullback. I would have been looking for a pullback to probably here, uh, this 9180 area. And we didn't get anything like it. Anyway, guys, let's uh, let's wrap it up here. Um, some some nice stuff here. Uh, you know, covered a lot of different uh, trading strategies and considerations. But again, it's really about the order flow around uh, some of these areas here. Very very simple things of looking at structure uh, and then the order flow within it. Okay, the volume first off the aggressors, uh, and then what that the supply and demand, how that affects uh, uh, how traders react. Uh, to that, okay, and and uh, and then start to look on where price might be going next. That's the the forward-looking analysis here, uh, and and the reason that we you know we do it is like uh, obviously it, it it's very helpful if you read it, then there's a higher probability, um, you know, when we understand the order flow in those areas, there's a higher probability for that scenario to unfold. So uh, you know you can do that with order flow. Uh, it, it's, uh, um, you know, what's the, what would be the right analogy here? Um, I, I'm not really sure in a, in a game of, of chance or probabilities, uh, you, you know, you, you can kind of, you kind of have an understanding of like, like if you're playing craps or something, how, how the dice are rolling and, 
you know, how many tumbles it'll take before it, it you know, when it's starting to slow down and, you know, where it kind of might, how it might land on a, on a number. Um, uh, so, yeah, we're, we, you know, you can kind of do that in the order flow. Uh, you can kind of start to understand, like, um, uh, you know, you have a, a closer view into what's, you know, going on there. Uh, and, and that's where the edge comes in. And order flow is an edge. All right. So uh, anyway, uh, guys, uh, thanks for all the, all the kind words there, uh, everybody. So uh, have a good weekend. Uh, and we will uh, uh, talk about uh, uh, more order flow and, and uh, look for more uh, price movements on Monday. Okay. Thanks for coming, everybody. Bye-bye.